Hi everyone, my name is Carlo Delantar. I am from the Gobi Core Philippine Fund, and today we'll be talking about financing your business. Now today we'll run through different questions, different information. Take this as a way, or at least a guide for you to decide on how you're gonna run your business, but also how to effectively grow your business. There are five questions we'll, we'll be tackling today. Uh, why does a business need financing? What are the different types of financing? Where you can get f financing? What do I need to get funded? And of course, how much financing do I need? Now let's start with why a business needs financing. Now, every company needs financing at some point in their life. Giants like Apple, McDonald's, or if you think about the Jollibees and all, they need financing at any given point. It doesn't mean you need financing all the time, but usually business cycles need financing in order to grow, but also innovate to, be com to remain competitive. Now, when it comes to different variety of functions, we can broadly categorize uh, financing into three cat uh, categories. The first one is operating. So when we, when we need to update and purchase, whether that's inventory or machines, hiring, paying in employees, all the way to paying for rent or your OPEX. Now, investing is the next one. So when we talk about investing, it's like purchasing the best equipments for the next decade, all the way to purchasing and, de and developing new models and products, but also research and development. Lastly, financing, whether that's paying off your debt, buying out other sh shareholders over time, and also making long-term flexible lease payments. Now on to what are the different types of financing. So sit tight, this can be a bit more technical, but hopefully it provides you a sense of options when it comes to finding the right financing needs at any given time for your business. So there are different types of financing. That's, debt is gonna be the first one. We all know what debt is. Most of the time, it's in the form of loans. So this is when money borrowed with the agreement that it will be paid back at a later date, usually with interest. Now, the advantage of this, it's widely available. However, the disadvantages is that there is pressure to actually pay before the due date. And also, you have to consider there is an interest for borrowing that money. Now, this is very important because you don't want to be stuck by actually giving up your collateral, whatever you peg with your debt, but also when it comes to the financial head of your organization, you want to make sure you don't pay uh, more than you asked for. Next is equity. Uh, this is when shareholders are entitled to share in profits when distributed. So when we talk about money or other assets, is invested in exchange for ownership or shares in a business. So this is something that RVC or venture capital firm does. And usually there's no obligation to pay back. Um, there's no time frame to pay back the, the financing that's provided. Rather, we uh, ask in exchange for shares of your business because we are pegging ourselves to the exponential growth and returns of our investments now and also in the near future. Now, the disadvantages of this is, of course, your ownership in your business uh, gets reduced, but also it's really focused on your result-oriented uh, focus. So finding ways for you, even if you have a reduction of the percentage of shares, it's all about finding ways for your business to grow in order to maintain the value of your shares. Now, next is convertible debt. Now, convertible debt is somewhat confusing for a lot of people, but you could say it's somewhat a blend between debt and equity. Now, for this, it's really money borrowed with the agreement that it will be either paid back at a later date or be converted into equity or shares of a company. Now, the advantages of this is that um, usually the time frame is fairly flexible to paying it back, or you could actually provide the option of instead of paying back the, 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 the capital, you're actually uh, giving the option for the financiers to have equity down the line. And usually there's a cap for this as well. Now, the disadvantages of this, is it's really a question of being strategic when you need a convertible debt. For startups, we usually convertible debt or convertible notes are used as a bridge financing in order to not reduce 
the value of, of, of the shares of the business, but also making sure that there is a way to invite these new investors providing the convertible debt to, to grow with the business. Lastly is grants and donations, and definitely this is probably the best type of financing because it's fairly focused on non-interest-bearing non-interest, and there's no, own, there's no ask for an ownership in the business. Now the beauty, or at least the intricacy of this is the ones providing financing for this, they have a specific ask or specific requirement why they're providing this. Now you have to balance when you want grants or donations mainly because sometimes it's veering away from your main business goals and usually these types of financing is provided to nonprofits and social enterprises that need the support uh, at the very early stage. Now where can I get financing? So typically we want to categorize two types or at least two sources of financing internal and external now the internal is really funds from within the business this is where you get cash uh, from operations retained earnings or profits so whatever profits you have you can actually um, reuse those profits and investing inside the business or you can find ways to use a percentage of your profits in order to grow different uh, models and innovations within your business of course, you could also look at when you do sell some assets within your business, you can actually reinvest the, the, the proceeds of those sales back to creating a better business. Of course, the most common thing is really the external side. So whether that's from your personal savings when you're starting all the way to banks, you could ask for loans to corporate investors or the recent uh, popular one called crowdfunding, of course, subsidy programs. Now, what are the sources of external financing? Now, personal savings is something we all know. When you're starting a business, you usually start with your personal savings and see it's, if it's actually worth the time and opportunity. Uh, I highly suggest when you work or start with your personal savings to have at least six, to, six months to a year's worth of personal savings just to make sure to account for the externalities of the delayed growth of a business and also other aspects that could make the business uh, not create sales or profits within the first year. The next one is friends and family. Friends and family sort of an extension of your personal savings, but instead of just you, you're asking from your close friends and family. Uh, typically, the terms will be friendly or favorable of the business, and the amount of financing can raise from the source is typically limited. Now, I think what's very important here is the words friends and family. You need to make sure that you create expectations and this relationship that you're asking for financing in a professional manner rather than a familial or a personal manner because you also don't want to make sure or create that risk that you're burning bridges if your business fails. Next one is non-bank lenders. So like it says, non-banks, anything outside of um, banks that provide lending opportunities so you can look at pawn shops microfinancing uh, businesses and this type it's re it's typically less strict on lending requirements compared to banks but this is also typically it comes with high interest rates now key note here is a high interest rate sometimes at an emergency you might need to approach non-bank lenders especially when the opportunity pre presents itself but you have to remember, you need to find non-bank lenders that are regulated. And you, when you look at your financial health, you can actually take that hit at that very moment. Now, there are specific times you want to go to a non-bank lender, but please do make sure that you responsibly find a, an ethical non-bank lender. Next are banks. Now, banks are the biggest source of debt financing for businesses. Now, the beauty of banks is uh, they're highly regulated and will, will tend to offer lower and the most competitive interest rates on debt. Now the hard part here or at least when you create your expectations when approaching banks is the stringent time and effort to actually uh, have your financing release. Now this is very important because time is money. 
when you're doing and applying for financing from banks, it takes a long while and the releasing also takes a long while. So by that time, if you, if you can't find ways to actually maintain your business operations and you're relying with bank financing, you have to be a bit more um, practical and pragmatic, especially when it comes to these different timelines of banks. On towards private equity investors or what we call PEs. Now, private equity investors provide equity financing to more mature companies, typically with stable cash flows or a clear path to having stable cash flows. Most of the time, you approach a private equity investor when you're a way more mature company and you're in a path to hyper expansion. Now, the beauty of private equity investors is they have done a lot of work and experience with other businesses that went on hyper expansion mode but also because they want to be part of your board and be active within your operations to help you grow in a, in a, in a healthy manner, but for them to provide their expertise over a long period of time. Next is venture capital investors. And most of the time, this is where we come in. We're a venture capital investor. And where we do focus is we provide equity or convertible debt financing for earlier stage companies with the potential to grow rapidly and scale into large companies. So you could see this uh, type of investor coming in before the private equity investors and they usually bank on the hyper exponential value and growth of the equity over time through different funding rounds. Now they may join the board of the company and help set strategic direction but will not be involved in day-to-day -day operations of the company. Next is corporate investors or what we call corporate strategic investors. Now corporate investors sometimes make strategic investments into businesses mainly in the form of equity financing. Now usually uh, corporate investors come in either to help grow your current business that they might purchase or see the value of working together that helps their corporate strategic ag agenda for their current businesses. Now, the beauty of this is the financing that they provide, especially within in-house corporate venture building, is that they can uh, help you grow faster than the usual route, but also it comes with the premise that their agendas are set forth rather than your own specific agendas. Now, this is not a very common form of financing, and typically, only more established businesses with some connection to the main business of the corporate investor are able to secure this type of financing. Now, on to different types of public investing. There are two, uh, initial public offering and also the recent and more popular crowdfunding. Now, public retail investors can also provide equity financing to businesses. Now, historically speaking, the most common way has been through initial public offerings wherein an established business sells shares of stock to public investors. This is where you go to stock market or you look towards like bonds as well. But this is a form of financing that is generally reserved for larger and more mature business due to government regulations on public offerings. And usually after from VC financing to private equity financing, you go straight to a public uh, uh, to an initial public offering. So there's this, there's this path of financing that you can choose over time and they have specific types of check sizes as well. Now on to uh, the more uh, progressive type of public investing which we call crowdfunding. Now crowdfunding has become another way for public investors to provide financing to businesses. Now this financing may be in the form of equity wherein public investors can buy shares of the business and become shareholders. And usually crowdfunding may also take the form of customer financing wherein public investors provide funding upfront in exchange of a product or discount for a product in the future. Now this is great especially for businesses that are trying to uh, jumpstart a new product offering but don't have the financing to go to especially if they don't have collateral but also it creates this sense of support and market validation that uh, these public investors 
see the value of the products and services you provide. Lastly, we, we talk about grants, donations, and subsidy programs. And this is really um, a type of external financing uh, that generally have no strings attached aside from the requirement that funds be used for a predetermined purpose or goal in line with the program. As I, I said, it's very important when you take these types of financing, especially for grants, donations, and subsidy programs that it does not veer away from your main business goals, but rather it supports your main business goals. So what do I need to get funded? Now, there are specific general requirements, and this is non-exhaustive, but usually as a rule of thumb, these specific general requirements come in different stages, but we'll run through a few of them so that you can prepare them now uh, as they may be needed at any given opportunity that when you need financing or proactively when you want to speak to uh, investors. The first one is a business plan. For us, it's called a, a general overview deck. So it runs through specific things as what your business is, your idea, the total addressable market, what the product that you're providing, how much it costs, how much profit you, you're gonna make, and the forecast for this business to grow over time. This is a way to attract investors to see the opportunity that when they do finance this uh, endeavor, there is a sense of capital return. Now, after that, once there is interest with these specific financiers, next step is looking under the hood or what we call the financial information or due diligence portion. What this means is we look through your numbers, audited financial statements, um, all the way to your historical everything, really, to see and measure your growth from before and where you need to go, that the financing needs or at least the use of funds can actually connect the dots in order to create that capital return for these financiers. Um, this is very important and this is something that in order to see the, st uh, the scalability of the company, they need to measure where the business has been. Next step, of course, once they're happy with, with the requirements or what they see, they go straight to legal and corporate information. So making sure everything's legal when it comes to operating your business, what jurisdictions you abide, all the way to figuring out your contracts, um, any types of liabilities that you have, all the way figuring out if there are any roadblocks when it comes to your growth of your company. And then of course, others is pretty much anything that's under the sun, figuring out what types of missing pieces that needs to be uh, adhered based on the requirements of the financiers, but also to figure out if the founders or you specifically have figured it out if you've already found all the right relevant solutions or roadmap for you to grow over time, especially when you need this sort of financing. So how much financing do I need? Now, in terms of where you want to go, we, we wanted to visualize how a business runs, right? So you can see here, launch, growth, maturity, and decline. These are usual business phases that you run through. Now, while the business is eventually getting off the ground, it will initially incur losses, paying for various expenses. This is very important. As you can see, the green line going below zero and then going up. Eventually, sales pick up, the company breaks even, and it begins making a profit. Now, aside from expenses, a company also has to make investments to get business off the ground. Now, investment, the term investment here is very general because you need to, it could be investment on new hires, it could be an investment on making your operations uh, way more efficient, but also you need to remember that investments is part of a business life. This helps you grow over time just to make sure you maintain uh, profit and loss and growth stability. Now, as the business matures, less investment is needed, but some from time to time, in order to maintain things, you get to see that the business will start to decline. It might be a recession, it could be inflation, and sometimes you need a boost of help from financiers to actually maintain or increase the, the growth and stability of your business. Now, the net amount of cash a business produces or burns 
is your free cash flow. That's the, the yellow line there. And this is equal to your profit, loss, and investments. So having free cash flow also provides you the sense of safety that you're actually on the positive and you're uh, profitable. Now, when you, what you see here with the dotted red boxes, box here is when free cash flow is below zero, most of the time, not all the time, that's when it's an indicator of when external financing is needed. Now, once free cash flow is positive and so long as your free cash flow can cover your future business plan, you can opt not to avail of external financing. Now, for the most part, the amount of external financing needed is the total cash a business expects to burn to become free cash flow positive. And we'll talk about that later on, why that's important. And typically, this is not race in one go because, of course, um, there is inflation and the money that you receive now may not have the same value over time. So how much internal financing should a business raise at a given time? Now, here, I, the question of how much you need at any given time, and we, at least in our, in our opinion, we wanted, we wanted to categorize it in two different aspects. One is milestone-based, and this is when uh, you want to secure the amount of external financing you expect to need to hit your next milestone. So whether, you, let's say you're doing a franchising business and you want to expand to 100 stores in a year, that's a good example of milestone-based financing that you need in order for you to hit 100. This is how much you need in order to, to reach that goal. Runway base is a bit different uh, because this is when you can continue operating and growing the business without worrying about running out of cash too soon and having to secure more external financing. So this is more of a growth stage part. They can work hand in hand. Sometimes they get blended. But most of the time, when you come in to, uh, to ask for financing, you need to classify the amount needed through these categories. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we've ran through uh, the arc and journey that you will have to go through. Please remember to make sure you have your business plan ready, your financial information, and all these because this reduces the amount of time to release and approve your financing. And also, you want to make sure you need to be very critical and pragmatic on what type of financing you will be applying for. Because at the end of the day, uh, your business is yours and you have to protect your business for the sake of protecting the employees that you uh, provide uh, and support, but also the customers that you are serving as well. So thank you for your time. Hopefully you learned a few aspects of financing your business. You might start off a bit rocky because it's definitely a highly technical conversation and topic, but over time, you will see that this is an important aspect for your business to grow over time, but also to refine the best products and services you provide to, the, to your customers and also making sure safeguarding your employees and your internal processes to run as smoothly and to reach your business goals. So thank you for your time. Good luck and hope to see you soon.